Hi everyone, and uh, welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to discuss how you can measure current with a resistor. So you might be thinking now, measure current with a resistor, what the, what sort of thing's this? Surely you can't measure current with a resistor, but you can. And uh, it's actually a very good way of measuring current. So, just before I start, this is a, a wall meter, I suppose it's called, or a wall monitor, or energy monitor, whatever you want to call it. And this is actually the insides of one. So you'd plug this thing into the wall, and it would have a display here, an LCD, and it would show you the voltage of the um, power, and it would show you the current being used. And then from there, obviously, voltage multiplied by current equals watts. So it could tell you how much energy you're using. So the way this thing works is by using a resistor, and the resistor actually pulled it out. Um, it's a very low value resistor and it went in there so this resistor here uh, it doesn't actually look like a resistor but it is it's called a shunt resistor and um, this is how this little device here measures current so this is the same method that I'm going to show you how to do so yeah there's a device there and that's how it does it there's also another way to measure current and that's um, using one of these and this is a, a Hall effect sensor um, let's put it in my hand so you can see it. It's a Hall effect sensor, and um, the way this works is by um, well, Hall effect. It's to do with the magnetic field which surrounds power when it flows, and basically it measures that um, magnetic um, strength. Um, so that's another way of doing it. But the differences are between the two. These are extremely efficient, however, I find them to be very unstable, and, um, you know, they're, they're quite limited, um, and, well, yeah, that's just generally it. I find them to be quite unstable. I'd say that's the major drawback with these things. Now, with these, they're incredibly accurate, and the, the limits are, um, well, it's a bit, it's less limiting, basically. Um, the drawback is, with these, is that um, the whole concept of measuring current using a resistor can be quite wasteful. But anyway, nevertheless, it's still a good way of doing it. So I'm going to show you now. So the first thing I, need to, I think I need to answer is, you know, what's this about? How can you measure current with a resistor? And um, this is how. So hopefully you'll remember a couple of laws. There's the Ohm's law. Um, yeah, there's Ohm's law, and there's um, Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law, which I'll call um, KVL and KCL. Are often called that. Um, and using these laws, we can work things out. If we know two things, we can work something else out. And basically. Ohm's law, if I just go to Ohm's law, if you remember the triangle, there's E, I, R, E, I, R, and E is voltage, um, I is current, and R is resistance. If you were to know voltage, and you knew the current, you could work out the resistance, right? So if we had, um, I don't know, let's keep it simple. If we had 10 volts and we had 1 amp, yeah? 10 volts and 1 amp, 10 divided by 1 is 10. Therefore, the resistance would be 10 ohms. And if you don't believe me, try that out. And of course, it works the other way. If you know current and resistance, you can work out voltage. I mean, so if there was 1 amp, uh, 1 ohm, 1 multiplied by 1, equals 1, would be 1 volt. Um, if, it, if it was, I don't know, 10 amps and 10 ohms, 10 multiplied by 10 is 100, so therefore that circuit will be 100 volts. And um, yeah, that's the way it works. Now, what the, what's this got to do with it? Okay, this is what it's got to do with it. Now, using this info here, and KVL and KCL, we know that if we know the resistance of a resistor, let's just say a resist the resistance was um, 1 ohm, 
let's say the resistance was 1 ohm and let's say we knew something else voltage let's say the voltage was um, 12 volts well this means that we can work out the current and this is the significance of uh, of using a resistor for measuring current so if we know the voltage is 12 volts and we use a resistor of a known value so let's say 1 ohm we can work out the current so voltage or E is 12 so 12 divided by 1 is 12 12 divided by 1 is 12 so therefore that would be 12 amps so 12 volts 1 ohm would be 12 amps so what if we use um, I don't know a different voltage or a different um, resistance it doesn't matter the formula still works so I'll just I'll just give one more example. Let's come up with let's come up with another voltage. Let's say um, let's say five volts, and let's say two ohms. Oops, I don't know what I've done there. Two ohms. Um, so five volts, two ohms. So five divided by two is two point five. Two point five amps, and therefore if you had five volts. With a circuit with two ohms of resistance, the current flowing through would be 2.5 amps. If we have um, if we have a resistor with a known value and we have a voltage of a known value, we can work out the current, and um, and that's why you can measure current using a resistor. So there's a little bit more to it, and um, and this is how it works. Now. I said there's a little bit more to it. So we know the voltage and we know the resistance and we want to work out current. But in reality it's not this simple. You can't just know the voltage and resistance and work out current because there's a load. There'd be no point in checking the current of something where you know the voltage and resistance. Yeah? It wouldn't, there wouldn't be any point. So, um, so let's say we have um, a battery or a cell or whatever you want to call it and we have a load here and then let's say let's say we close that off there alright so let's connect this together so um, we know that the battery is 12 volts but um, we don't know the current and maybe you don't know resistance either. So this is where we'd want to measure the current, of course. So we know the voltage, we don't know the resistance, and we don't know the current. So what we can do is we can put a resistor. I mean, that's I've put a resistor symbol in there, but actually that means load, OK? So we can put a resistor in here, a shunt resistor, like I've just explained. We'll put one in here. Okay, and now what we can do is um, we can measure the voltage here before the shunt resistor, and then we can measure it after. Okay, right. Now, in Kirchhoff's voltage law, um, it states that any drops within a closed loop all equal the main voltage okay so if this is 12 volts here um, then and this is 11 volts for example this drop here then you know that's one volt because all of the drops within a closed loop always add up to that voltage so because of this the load here will um, will present a voltage drop and the load here, which we've just added, which is a shunt resistor, will also present us with a voltage drop. So, what we have to do is um, measure that voltage drop there. So, if we know that this is 1 ohm, for example, we could measure the, vo the voltage before and the voltage after, and uh, we can calculate something based on that. 
Okay, so I'm just going to throw some um, some numbers in here, just as an, as an example, and we'll we'll go from there. So let's say, I mean, we of course we don't know much about the load here. That's why we're we're doing the measurement. But let's say here we have uh, three volts here, and we have zero volts here. Now it makes sense for this to be zero volts because this is this is um, ground, you know, because it's the, going to the negative there, and there are no further loads. Uh, well, apart, apart from the resistance in the, within the wire, but we'll not worry about that because that'll be negligible. Okay, so let's say that's zero volts, and this is three volts. Now, because we know the voltage drop across the resistor, yeah, it's it's there's a three volt voltage drop. Then we can work out three volts, yeah, and we know the resistance, which is one ohm if we just draw ohm's triangle again we've got 3 volts divided by 1 it's 3 amps and that's how, that's basically how it works so put the shunt resistor in in series with the load then measure the voltage drop across that resistor then the voltage drop and because you know the resistance of it, you can work out the current. So the voltage drop divided by the resistance which you already know equals current. And that's how much current in this circuit here, that's how much current would be flowing through. 3 amps. As a side point, it's not really a, a great deal to do with the video, but as a side point, because you know there's 3 amps flowing through this circuit here, and you know that it's the whole voltage is 12 volts, because it, and you know the drop here is 3 volts, because of Kirchhoff's voltage law, you know that the drop over here is 9 volts, and because you know the drop here on this load is 9 volts, and you know there's 3 amps going, running through the circuit, you can also work something else out. Oh, look at this. Uh, if we do another triangle here, and uh, we put 9 volts at the top there, and we put 3 amps here, 9 volts divided by 3 is 3. Therefore, not that it really matters as part of the video, but therefore, you know that the resistance of this load here is 3 ohms. Again, you know, it doesn't really apply to the video, but still it's interesting. Okay, so um, that's basically how it works. And um, now to go a step further. 